Hi guys. Welcome to Instant Films. The movie we will be recapping today is an enthralling time loop story which also acts as an engaging political thriller. The film is Manadu. Watch the complete video to experience a constant flow of amazing twists. Let's begin. The date is the 10th of October 2019. A flight has been halted for a VIP person. The person is Abdul Khaliq, a businessman based in Dubai. Manas, the CM's assistant admires him and gives him a contact card. Khaliq gets seated and the flight takes off. A string of prayer is heard as the flight faces some turbulence midair. The praying person is Sita Lakshmi. Sita is afraid and unconsciously holds Khaliq's hand. Khaliq jokes around with her and they start bonding. They both find out that they both are heading for the same wedding. Khaliq is from the bride's side and Sita is from the groom's side. The flight lands and Khaliq receives a call from his friend who is outside the airport waiting for him. It is followed by some unrelated sequences that will be relevant later. At the airport, a part of the glass ceiling falls and a piece of it hurts a girl. An old lady accidentally breaks a wheel of her suitcase while picking it from the conveyor belt. Khaliq witnesses all this. Khaliq asks Sita if she would want a lift to the wedding and she agrees. He exits the airport and is greeted by his friends, Murti and Syed with whom he heads towards the wedding. Khaliq teases Ishwar using the groom's name. The reason behind it will be explained later. The road they travel through is littered with banners promoting the ruling party's conference to be held today. Tamizwanan, an activist is seen walking on a road greeting people. Khaliq and his friends find themselves in a roadblock. After inquiring, they find out that the block is due to an activist's death called Tamizwanan whom we saw in the previous scene. They reach to the wedding and a song and dance sequence begins. Khaliq asks Sida to give a burqa to Zarina with an idea of a game in which the groom has to guess the bride through eyes. Sida gives it to Zarina but with a yellow mark on it. She goes to the groom and says that Zarina's burqa has a yellow mark on it but the groom doesn't seem to have any idea that a game is going on. Sida is confused. Everything gets cleared for her when she sees a woman wearing a burqa with a yellow mark i.e., Zarina eloping with Ishwar, Khaliq's friend. She shouts out loud. Khaliq starts the car and speeds it up as Zarina's brother is chasing them. They manage to escape but get into another problem. They hit a man who jumped in front of the car. Khaliq gets out and helps the guy by carrying him to the back seat of his car. The police find them there and check put what's going on. It seems the police know Rafiq, the guy who was hit. The commissioner enters the scene with an elaborate introduction. He asks everyone's names mainly with an intention to know their religion. Abdul Khaliq inspires his attention. He orders the sub-inspector to arrest all of them for an undefined reason. Instead of taking them to police station, the commissioner takes them to an abandoned building. Rafiq, the person who got hit is seen laying down on the ground. Khaliq questions this and the inspector slaps him. He starts naming the laws they've broken and tells them that they'll be imprisoned for life. Zarina and Syed plead him to let them leave. He agrees on a condition that Khaliq will do whatever he asks him to do. They take Khaliq to another place. Amidst that, he sees two women crying in a locked room. They ask him to change his clothes and take his photos. They completely change his identity by making fake social media accounts on his name with provocative messages. Thus, they link him to terrorist organizations. Khalik is taken to the press conference mentioned earlier and is given an ID card with reporter identity and also a bag. Khalik passes through the security check freely because the policeman doesn't check him. He gets into the crowd that's receiving the speech from the chief minister. He has an earphone in one ear through which the inspector contacts him and orders to open the bag. The bag has a gun in it. The inspector orders Khalik to shoot the CM with it. Being a human, Khalik hesitates but the inspector insists. When Khalik still doesn't do the thing, the inspector kills Ishwar and threatens to kill others too. Khalik, in desperation aims the gun towards the CM and pulls the trigger. This causes mayhem. Khalik is surrounded by the same policeman who brought him here and is shot down. Khalik dies. Khalik wakes up in the airplane with Sida reciting prayer beside him. He is confused and questions Sida to clear his doubts. He feels as if all of this has happened before. The plane lands and Khalik talks to his friends at the airport. He remembers the glass falling and a girl being hurt so he is able to protect the girl from the glass. He also helps the old lady that had previously mishandled her suitcase. All the things that follow happen exactly as they happened before. His friends meet him. Sida travels with them. They elope with the bride, this time with Sida's help. But when it comes to hitting Rafiq, things change. Khalik remembers that and stops before hitting Rafiq. Still, Rafiq comes bashing on Khalik's windows. He gets into the back seat of the car. This time too, the police find them and Rafiq tries to run away resulting in the police catching him. The inspector enters the scene with bombastic entry but this time he kills Khalik. Khalik wakes up again but this time with a better understanding of what's going on and doesn't interact much with Sida. At the airport, he doesn't even flicker at the glass falling. 
After questioning his friends, he figures out that he is the only one stuck in a time loop. They reach the wedding and elope with the bride. Khalik is cautious and he changes the path this time avoiding the police completely. Ishwar and Zarina successfully marry and are at the railway station, about to leave. Khalik notices a news channel on television showing the news of CM's death. Khalik doesn't understand this as he wasn't there to kill CM. Suddenly, Zarina's brother interrupts them and in a fight with them, kills Khalik. Khalik wakes up and this time explains his situation to all of his friends. Ishwar and Khalik share some movie references with each other like Groundhog Day, Edge of Tomorrow and many more. Sida shares a theory with them about Ujjain and how so many stories of people revisiting the same day, have originated from there. Khalik recalls a story about his birth that somewhat gives an explanation to what's going on. During the riots of 1992, Khalik was about to be born and, the safest place his father could find was a temple in Ujjain. His friends conclude by this that God has given him this gift for a meaningful purpose. Khalik accepts this and re-evaluates everything. He attends the conference to see how CM dies without his presence. He finds Rafiq at his place. As Rafiq is about to shoot, Khalik pushes him aside. The CM still dies. Khalik guides his eyes towards the gun that shot the CM. It is a hitman camouflaging as a cameraman. The hitman escapes. Khalik takes Rafiq to a corner and questions him. Rafiq says that he was sent by Dhanushkodi, the commissioner. The commissioner himself appears in front of them. He orders Rafiq to follow him but Khalik doesn't let him do so. The commissioner takes out his gun and points it at Khalik. Khalik defends himself and a fight begins. Khalik is wounded. The fight continues and ends with commissioner's death. The commissioner falls on Khalik. The other policemen find this out and shoot Khalik killing him on the spot. Khalik wakes up and this times, follows the hitman after his work is done. He keeps following and ends up in front of a hall. The hall includes people in various religious costumes preparing weapons for an unknown purpose. Khalik tries sneaking in but the boss sees him and wants him killed. One of the henchmen manages to land a blow on Khalik and he dies. Skipping all the plane-related parts, we see Khalik standing in front of the hall ready to go in again. This time, when the henchman hits him, he is able to counter it smoothly and hits back. He does so repeatedly, dying and learning from the mistake. Thus, countering it. This accounts for one of the coolest action scenes of the year. A single hero killing 100 people, trope is given a solid logic here. After many tries, when Khalik finally gets his hand on the hitman, the boss gets closer to kill him. Khalik tries to spill out the hitman's address from him. After being hit multiple times, the hitman finally reveals his staying place. The boss stands beside Khalik and strikes at him killing him. Knowing the address, Khalik is now at it. He brings Sida with him to the hitman's room. He hits hitman and ropes him up to a chair. He hands the responsibility of holding the hitman to Sida. Khalik's friend, Syed has roped in Rafiq. Thus, Khalik assumes he has now prevented the death of CM. He attends the conference cautiously and his assumption almost comes true. The CM delivers the speech successfully and then his car leaves. But here's where the assumption fails. CM's car is blasted off and falls on Khalik killing him as well as the CM. Next time, Khalik brings his friends to witness everything at the conference. He predicts everything for them. A scripted riot begins in front of them as Khalik sees the boss from the hall in a religious avatar. A religious riot is being orchestrated. Khalik confronts the commissioner and gives him a short monologue against creating religious riots. Khalik says that he'll stop the riot from happening. The commissioner replies, whatever had to happen has happened and he can't stop anything. Khalik places the gunpoint on himself and says, he'll be back, implying that he will relive the day again. Khalik dies but this time both Khalik and commissioner wake up implying that, the commissioner is also reliving the same day with Khalik. A series of flashback sequences are shown to give the backstory behind it. When the commissioner and Khalik had fought, the wound on Khalik and on commissioner came in contact leading to some blood transfer. This is how the commissioner got into the time loop. Since then, the commissioner had been trying to find out who was the reason behind the time loop. When his previous plan failed multiple times, the commissioner planted a bomb under the CM's car. When Khalik kills himself in front of commissioner, he finally comes to know that it is due to Khalik. Commissioner is now ready for a face-off in the time loop. In one instance, he tries explaining his situation to the CM's friend, Paran Thaman who is behind the assassination of the CM. But the minister just doesn't understand him. When the minister rehearses his speech, commissioner completes his speech instead of him. The minister now believes in commissioner's time loop. By their discussion, commissioner concludes that Khalik should not die and thinks of another plan. Meanwhile, Khalik is trying to implement his plan. He barges into the abandoned building that the police had brought him to previously. After finding the mother and sister of Rafiq, he helps them out of the building. In the jeep, Rafiq's mother shares the backstory of Rafiq. Rafiq's father was also framed in a case and then Rafiq became responsible for the survival of the family.
One day, the police approached Rafiq and jailed him for no apparent reason. He was then asked to assassinate the CM. Khalik has reached the place where Rafiq is about to meet him. At the place, it turns out that some other person has taken Rafiq's place. The other person is the hitman. Hitman starts chasing Khalik with gunshots. When this fails, he launches a drone tracking Khalik. The drone attaches itself on one side of the jeep and the jeep explodes killing Khalik. Khalik wakes up and is confused. Next, he gets to the hotel where Hitman is supposed to reside but finds some army personnel instead. Hitman whistles at Khalik from another place. Khalik follows him. Hitman keeps teasing him throughout the chase. He gets into an elevator. Khalik uses stairs and manages to reach on time. The elevator opens and instead of Hitman, Rafiq is seen standing in front. Again, this confuses Khalik. Commissioner is shown conscious of all this. Rafiq points his gun at Khalik and shoots, killing him. Khalik wakes up and attends the conference. To his surprise, there is no Rafiq or Hitman there. The CM completes his speech and his vehicle proceeds without any blast. Instead, a blast happens behind Khalik compelling him to fall. Commissioner approaches Khalik and proudly confesses that all this confusion is his doing. Khalik and Commissioner finally have a dialogue. Khalik asks Commissioner to stop all this. Commissioner obviously doesn't agree and puts forth his idea. He warns Khalik that if he doesn't obey him, Commissioner will make the time loop torturous for Khalik by killing all his friends and family multiple times. The Commissioner ends the meeting by killing Khalik and resetting the day. Khalik takes help of his friends in the next loop. One of his friends, Syed asks Khalik to leave all this and just let the CM die based on his fate. Khalik explains to him that it's less about the CM but more about the blame put on one section of the society due to it. This blame would continue to haunt that section for a long time. Khalik and his friends figure out that the man behind the assassination is one of the ministers but not the exact person. They guess that it can't be Mulligan as he was also in a blast. So, they try to contact Mulligan, the CM's son. For this, Khalik recalls the CM's assistant he met in plane at the beginning. They call him using his contact card and Seether acts as Rafiq's personal assistant. She sets up a meeting with them for a multi-crore deal. CM's assistant agrees to set up a meeting with Mulligan, the CM's son. Khalik and co. meet up with Mulligan at the activist's funeral. Mulligan has CM's assistant and a friend, Paranthaman, beside him. Khalik confesses that he isn't there to do a business deal instead he is there to talk about the CM's assassination that will happen tonight. Paranthaman is spiked when he hears this. He talks to Khalik in private. When Khalik doesn't listen, he takes them in his car to some place. Syed, who was outside sees this and follows them. Manikkan is seen hung upside down. Khalik is also tied to a chair with a rope and is all beaten up. Paranthaman discloses that he had told Tamizwanan, the activist about the assassination and asked for his help. The activist had declined the offer so Paranthaman killed him. Khalik says that he didn't get to know all this from the activist. He says that the person who revealed it to him was the commissioner. Khalik insists that the commissioner is a master planner and Paranthaman is just a pawn. Paranthaman calls the commissioner to confirm this. The commissioner asks Paranthaman to wait for him until he arrives at the place to clarify everything. Paranthaman is suspicious of commissioner as he pleads for the life of Khalik but still Paranthaman gives him a chance. Syed enters the scene as he has been following them. Syed questions Paranthaman but in anger, he picks up a knife and slices Syed's neck, killing him. Then he slaps Seether. Khalik provokes Paranthaman to kill him so he is agitated and moves towards Khalik to kill but at the end moment, he is prevented to do so by a known hand. It is the commissioner who prevents the kill. Khalik uses this moment effectively and starts confusing Paranthaman by claiming that the commissioner is his leader. Thus, constantly provoking the commissioner to kill him. Commissioner tries to contain himself but ends up pointing his gun at Paranthaman. To prove himself, the commissioner hands over the gun to Paranthaman in hopes that he understands. The commissioner manages to convince Paranthaman and he leaves the room handing Khalik over to the commissioner. The commissioner confronts Khalik and reminds Khalik of what he said about killing his friends. He acts on his words and shoots Ishwar. Commissioner is very adamant that he wants the day to come to an end with Khalik alive and his friends dead making the things permanent as they are now. Khalik pleads commissioner to kill him but the commissioner being himself doesn't listen to Khalik and leaves him alive to bear this reality. At the conference, Prathaman tells Malagan that Khalik was just putting on a bluff. In the locked room, Khalik notices Seether waking up and asks her to pass the needle near her leg towards him. The conference is about to begin as the commissioner is setting it all up. Seether passes the needle. As it closes in, Khalik jumps with the chair targeting to land on the needle. The CM is giving his speech. Hitman has shot the bullet and it is about to hit the CM as the commissioner observes it. Khalik successfully falls on the needle killing himself and restarts the day. Khalik wakes up feeling relieved and the commissioner wakes up frustrated. The commissioner wonders how did Khalik die. Khalik immediately starts thinking about his next step. 
He figures that the activist, Tamizwanan could convince the CM into not attending the conference if Khalik manages to save him from his death. He immediately gets out and heads to the roadblock where the activist dies. He finds out the time of the death and next time, tries to reach there before the activist's death. He tries multiple options. At first, he asks Syed to hand him over the car and rushes to the roadblock but is late. Next, he exits the airplane first and then uses a motorcycle to get in time but fails by a slight distance as the gang boss manages to push the activist in front of a truck. Next, he steals a sports bike from the airport and rushes to the place. The gang boss spots him and sends his henchmen to hunt him. Khalik defends himself by attacking at them fiercely. He gets very close to the activist but it's not enough. The gang boss manages to use his knife and slits the activist. Khalik fails again. Meanwhile, the commissioner is watching a news channel in which, he sees something relevant for him. Ishwar, Khalik's friend is seen at the airport implying that Khalik's location at the beginning of the day is the airport considering Khalik is with Ishwar. Khalik, again tries to save the activist and gets to the airport in hurry but he is met with something unfortunate, the commissioner. Now, he decides his move carefully. He runs, and is chased by the policeman. After a while, he stops in the middle of the airport. The commissioner is confused. Khalik takes the high ground and shows him the middle finger. The glass ceiling falls. Khalik had cleverly placed himself under the falling glass. Khalik wakes up and this time, the commissioner is even more prepared. His policemen are waiting for Khalik at the airport. He gives them description of Khalik's dress and orders them to use the emergency gate to avoid the glass ceiling. Just as the flight stops, Khalik heads towards the gate and opens the emergency slide. He slides down the slide and yet again, outsmarts the commissioner. When commissioner hears about this, he is infuriated. He takes his friend's car and speeds it up to the location. He sees the activist walking beside the gang boss. He pushes the boss away and holding the activist's hand gets him in the car. He tells the activist about Paranthaman's plan and then asks if he could convince the CM to not attend the conference. All this time, the commissioner is trying to track Khalik's car on the CCTV. When he tracks the car, he orders the policeman to follow Khalik and chase him down. The chase continues for a while until Khalik manages to hide the car. The police are continuously searching. Khalik has hidden the car in a car wash. In the car wash, Khalik says to the activist they've very limited time and they better hurry. After some exposition, the activist agrees to Khalik's suggestion. The commissioner alerts a policeman as he sees Khalik's car leaving behind him. The chase restarts but this time, the police manage to cover the car from all sides. The police shout at the car asking for Khalik to come out. To the police's surprise, Khalik isn't in the car. Instead, it's the activist who has taken his place. The CM is seen heading towards the press conference to be held later today. In the office, the commissioner meets up with Paranthaman in private and tries to explain his situation but doesn't manage to do so. Paranthaman asks commissioner to just take care of whatever comes up. The CM and his son, Mulligan are seen praying in a small temple in the office. Paranthaman heads to talk to them. The CM suddenly feels discomfort in his heart. Due to it, he asks Paranthaman to attend the press conference instead of him. Paranthaman is perplexed. He keeps insisting the CM to attend the conference even though CM is obviously in pain. Paranthaman says that CM should attend the conference for at least the last 10 minutes. CM breaks out of the character and says, I should be there so that you can kill me? He has told me everything, pointing at Khalik who makes an entry from behind the statue. In a flashback, it is shown how Khalik met the CM and showed the activist's video as a proof. Khalik asked the CM to try testing Paranthaman by saying that he will not attend the conference. Khalik assured CM that Paranthaman would repeatedly insist on CM's attendance at the conference. Paranthaman proudly confesses and says if he hadn't done this, the CM will make his son the next chief minister. CM says he had no such intention but Paranthaman is still adamant on his point of view. He says on CM's face that he will kill CM. The commissioner takes the center stage and says why to wait if they can kill the CM right here. He shoots on Khalik's leg and goes on to explain how they can kill CM and then blame Khalik for it. The commissioner points his gun at the CM. Khalik pushes him and instead of the CM, the commissioner shoots at CM's son. Khalik hits the commissioner leading to the gun falling off his hand. Meanwhile, Paranthaman uses a cloth to strangle the CM. Khalik continues hitting the commissioner until he falls on the ground. He then heads to save the CM from Paranthaman. CM's son manages to call the guards in. The commissioner sees his gun in front of him. Khalik and the CM are also aware and fearful of this. He picks the gun up and points at the CM. Khalik gets a flashback of all the events that preceded. He shouts, Allah, and jumps. The commissioner shoots. Khalik has jumped in front of the CM and takes the bullet instead of the CM. The guards enter the place and shoot down the commissioner. Khalik sees a blurry image of this. He wakes up and is told that the date is the 11th of October implying it's the next day. 
the CM comes in to thank Khalik and says that they covered up all of it and stated, Paranthaman had died due to a cardiac arrest, implying he died a hero's death. Khalik points this out. The CM says that even good people have to sometimes deep their hands into dirty things, in politics. Khalik is neutral about it. The news shows the Paranthaman memorial being conducted. At the discharge, Khalik sees his friend searching for him. This leads to a flashback in which Khalik tells Seetha that he is a raw agent and wants her to help pick up a bride. In the present, Zarina's brother is seen heading towards them furiously. Khalik manages to stand up and faces up with the brother. The movie ends with a close-up of Abdul Khalik. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the movie as well as the recap. Let me know what you think of the movie as I personally enjoyed it very much and was fascinated by the dual time loop concept. Do subscribe to the channel for more such great movie recaps.